Uh, Ross, can you talk us through this morning how that all worked out? Um, I was just in uh, my office and Sam came in, our uh, head physio, and said uh, that Carl tested positive to two uh, rat tests and he's had his uh, PCR this afternoon and waiting for results uh, to come back. Um, interim head coach, how, how does that sit with you? Is that, I mean, probably a lot to process already, but is that something that excites you? As being an interim. Well, no, you're <laughs> taking the reins. And, and yeah, look, you know what? It's it, uh, it's definitely something that I want to do in the future and be, be a head coach, but it's not about me. It's about us playing in the FFA Cup uh, quarter final against Melbourne Victory and, and getting the results. Um, important thing is that the, the messages that were given this morning in training were exactly the same as what Carl would have given. Um, and nothing to, not much changed, to be totally honest with you. The, uh, only the analysis uh, that I presented this morning. Um, uh, was was done a little bit differently. Have you spoken to Carl? How has he taken the news? Yeah, you know, he's fine. Carl's fine. He feels fine as well, so he's good. Are you, are you worried about a... You've got a number of players now, yet two or three already last week. Are you worried about a, a potential outbreak and how that might further affect the squad? Uh, no, not really. If it does, I think we'll just have to cancel games and then that'll be uh, probably uh, better for the team, uh, similar to Central Coast Mariners, who they've had but they've had 15, I think. So, um, you know, we just got to take it as it comes. Gosh, what's, the, what's the likelihood of more players at the moment testing positive? Uh, everyone had a rat test this morning, so everyone was okay. Um, but I can't see anything. Uh, yeah, all, the, all the players that have actually tested positive with the PCR all tested positive with a rat test. So uh, we're, we're regularly tested and, and everyone was okay this morning. Just go through the names that are going to be missing tomorrow night. Against the victory Everyone's available apart from Delianov and the players that have tested positive. Um, have you sort of got an indication from the league or the FA what the sort of threshold is in terms of how bad things would need to get for games to be postponed? I think we can postpone them once you've had five uh, positive um, outcomes. So it'll be up to uh, us as a club as well to, to decide what uh, we do in the future. Yeah. Mate, can you give us an update on Delianov? Is he is he out for? Yeah, he dislocated his uh, shoulder. He's had his MRI and and has an appointment with the doctor this afternoon to see what uh, what happens next. So um, it doesn't look great, to be totally honest. But uh, young Stevie Hall came in and and did uh, really well. Does he get the dogs again tomorrow? Night? Yeah, yeah. Stevie will play tomorrow night, and you know I, I think the most impressive thing about Stevie was. Um, he actually took it in his stride. Uh, the one thing that made me extremely proud was uh, how the fans got right behind him from his first kick. And uh, being a South Australian, and Stevie's one of us, uh, the South Australian supporters got right behind their own. So, you know, it was, it was great to see. And, and yeah, he, like I said, he took it in his stride. What's the position of you talking to him as he was going on yep. the pitch? What did, what did you say to him? What were the words getting through? Basically, I said, go and, go and enjoy it because there's only one first. Um, I actually said it to him in the dressing room as well when he was on the bench. He didn't realise he was on the bench. And I said, if you're in any danger, if you feel that uh, you might be in any danger, I said, just kick the ball long. You know, there's no need to put yourself under added pressure. And, and the players were good as well uh, around young Steve. They, didn't, uh, they protected him. They didn't put him under a, a great deal of pressure. But when he had to play out, he did extremely well. Didn't doubt kick it out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you take a bit of pride in, in being a club that you've obviously been at a youth first approach for a couple of years now that, that's got a sort of environment where a 16 year old can, can come in and not really let the, the occasion get the better of them? Yeah, and, and that, that goes to show what the club has done uh, with the youth team, with the youth policy at the club. Uh, it was clear when I first came here, um, made by Nathan Cosmina and, and uh, Piet van der Poel, is that we are a, a club that will want to produce players and therefore you have to sell players and with that comes inconsistencies but we, we need to be patient just like we are with Bernardo um, you know playing uh, starting uh, the other night um, but it, it does we are exp extremely proud of what we uh, have achieved with these young players as well and and uh, we take a lot of pride in that and we will continue to uh, play these young players when, when needed. Was the Ben Halloran situation a bit of a shock? Uh, not for myself because I knew what was going on, um, but we'll see what happens. It gives an opportunity for Ben um, to, to play in a, another part of the world and like I said, the club's not going to stand 
in players' way, and, and, and it's also good business for the club. You know, they're not going on freeze, uh, so it is very, very positive for the club financially. I guess who, the question is who comes in now and fills that role? Uh, I can confirm um, that we are in talks with a, a foreign striker. Uh, we're close to coming to uh, agreeing with, with the player. And also, we're speaking to a young Australian attacking player as well. So, fingers crossed, all works out. Can you give us a country? No. <laughs> Does that um, have anything to do with, with Stefan Wolf's immediate future as well? Bit of talk that he's off to Japan. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, uh, the club, um, there, there's an offer on the table for Stefan as well. Uh, it's up to him what he does. Um, and the club won't stand in his way. And, and like I said, really good business for the, for the club. Uh, it, you know, when a player has an opportunity to play in a foreign country and earn a lot of money, you can't stand in their way. And, and as uh, being a former player myself, um, you know, I'd, I wouldn't have liked if that had happened to me. And, and that's why we, the club and, and Carl and myself wouldn't stand in the player's way. Do you get the, um, just by the way you're speaking there, I mean, I know Carl said that the Ben's offer was too good to be true. Do you, do you, or too good to turn down, do you get the feeling that will likely be the case with Stephen as well? I, I believe so. I believe it's a very, very good offer. Um, and a captain of the club, and a vice captain as well. Um, but like I said, it's good business for the club and, and the club will continue with their philosophy in, in uh, bringing in players. And if we sell players and make money for the club, then that's what you know we'll need to do. And, and uh, keep working on our youth and also bringing in good foreign players. It's great for the players, but for, for guys like you and Carl, your job is it's a results-based yep. game. And, and to lose not just probably your two best players or two of your best three or four, but two leaders, as you, as you said there, four or five games into the season. How, how difficult is that going to be to cover? Um, if, we, if we sign these other two players, then you know, we've covered those positions. So uh, we're, we're very hopeful and positive. Uh, that we will sign those players and and in football these things happen and we need to be prepared for that uh, and we are we believe we are and uh, if they if they both go and the other two come in then we'll play with that who's going to fill the role as captain that's the... i don't know <laughs> that's actually something that uh, um, myself carl and the club will discuss in the future will Stefan play tomorrow yes everyone's available uh, for selection like i said apart from delianov I have to ask you one about Morgan Victory. What are you, what are you expecting from them you know, tomorrow night? Uh, to play their normal game, uh, to be totally honest. They, uh, they don't change much. They're very good defensively. Uh, Popper's always got his teams very well structured. Um, and we need to stop them from playing and, and capitalise on their mistakes as well. Because we've been playing some very, very good football. All the games that we've played in, um, we've dominated possession. Uh, on the weekend, I think it was 56% or 54% uh, possession, but you know it's between 50 and 60% in our favour. So we're doing uh, extremely well. We're, we're creating a lot of chances, and uh, finally we scored a lot of goals. I guess just one more on Jason's point about who steps up, not necessarily as captain, but how do you feel the, the leadership void? We've got a lot of leaders in our team, and, and you, I think uh, we forget that we've got Isaias in the team, who um, I'm pretty sure was a, a very, very good leader when they won the championship or when Adelaide United won the championship. And, you know, we've got the Spanish boys as well. And there, there's quite a few players that lead by example. So I don't think it would be a, a, a tough decision. We've got Craig Goodwin, who's a South Australian, um, could possibly step up. But, you know, as far as leading uh, the group, they all lead by example. A bit more of a philosophical question. You've been around uh, the Australian domestic game for a long time now. How, how did, does the A-League close the gap with these big... Asian nations. We're constantly seeing some of our best players not move to Europe like they used to, yeah. but just moving to, to clubs with more money in Asia. Yeah, look, it's. I, I really don't know how to answer that question, uh, to be totally honest. I, I think that the money's got a lot to do with it. Um, I wouldn't say they're, they're better leagues. Um, there's definitely uh, better players uh, at, at the high end uh, in those leagues. So you know, it's great for our, our game that our players are going overseas and playing in, uh, with better players against better players and, and financially for themselves as well because it's a short career 
and you try and make as much money uh, as you can in that short period of time. I know you're being really coy about the players you bring in, but what sort of quality are they, just so we can get a glimpse of the players? Uh, the, the foreign player is, has had um, uh, very good European experience as well, and also experience in Asia. Um, and he's a top quality player and uh, I suppose we're very lucky if, if we uh, do get to sign him and the young Australian uh, is, is currently playing in Europe um, and has played in the A-League before and is a very exciting player. So they are two players that, that we're extremely excited to have at the club.